When walking the streets of Kyoto, I often thought back to how the city was initially considered as a prime location to set off the atom bomb as World War II came to a close. However, it was finally decided that were Kyoto to be destroyed, being a city renowned for its beauty and cultural significance, Japan would thereafter never surrender. And so, the atom bomb never touched Kyoto. Kyoto is an easy city to enjoy. The river lends itself to cocktail bars overlooking glorious sunsets, kimonos are readily available for hire, and you'll often see locals or Japanese tourists, I could never tell, uh, dressed up and walking the streets in floral robes, and overall you truly get the vibe that it's a city people relish living in. And that's just Kyoto as a city. Its location is so well placed in the center of Honshu, Japan's main island, that people strapped for time can comfortably set up base here and make day trips to Nara, Osaka, Hiroshima. Arriving from Nakatsugawa, I stepped into Kyoto during another scorching afternoon. I dropped off my bag and having no plans, genuinely just chose a direction and started walking. I went east across the river and paused by a shrine. It was stunning, but it was also so freaking hot that I was desperate to get indoors somewhere. The nearby National Museum seemed to fit the bill, so I thought, perfect, I'll head there. Except it turns out, major museums are closed on Mondays throughout most of Japan, so fuck me I guess. But this was Kyoto, and across the road was a literally thousand year old archery temple known as, and I'll butcher this, the Sanju Sangendo and it's filled to the brim with Buddhist statues and descriptions of the events that used to take place there. While you weren't allowed to film the statues, my favourite part was definitely learning about the old archery competitions, which were trials of accuracy as well as endurance, the most famous of which resulted in one contestant firing 13,000 arrows over 24 hours. It was a cool place to walk around and I'm glad I took the time to stop by. But I won't ramble on about tourist sites, there's just too many. To keep it brief, the next day I went to Nara to feed biscuits to bow and deer, which is just as sick as it sounds, and the day after I visited the Fushimi Inari Shrine where you can find the iconic Thousand Gates, and if you're an idiot like me, you can accidentally end up on the three hour track looping around the mountain. I also checked out a monkey park and the bamboo forest. Compared to everything else, the bamboo forest is kind of lame, but whatever, it's there. And altogether, you'll probably feel overwhelmed. There's just so much to see with so little time. Let's hear the rest of it. So Kyoto has a lot to keep you busy, but if you like dingy bars, you'll freaking love what's on offer. All along the river are these quiet, dimly lit bars with soft piano and jazz, and your first reaction walking into one of these places is, oh shit, this is fancy, I can't afford this. But going in with a friend I made along the Kizo Valley Trail, and taking pretty big liberties with cocktails and spirits, these were far cheaper than what I'd find at home in Sydney. I'd say on average it was like $10 a cocktail, 
Anyway, these are chill and atmospheric and I ended up visiting Hello Dolly and Atlantis and can easily recommend both. The hostel I stayed at was fine. It's centrally located, the staff are friendly and it's easy to make friends at the bar. I had some fun Aussie roommates and they were obviously comfortable with me since they had no problem walking around naked. The downstairs food is kind of pricey but I did appreciate the breakfast variety on offer. And for like $10 or so, you can start the day with a yogurt and a hard boiled egg which sounds kind of shit saying it aloud but I swear it's fine. And that's Kyoto. Everyone visiting Japan comes here. Everyone enjoys it. And there's not much else to say. Next was a brief stop in Osaka where I befriended a great artist, made a few friends actually, and did probably the most generic touristy things you can do in Osaka. So, get excited.